boards. You built a company by word of mouth and then as you say people were attracted to the integrity, the passion of what you were doing and you never strayed from course and went worked for the GM car show. Uh, not that you shouldn't do that as a source of income but you never strayed from course and you attracted people who then brought you layer to layer and you drove it from inside. An integral part of any organization, arts organization, is the board. Mm -hmm. How did you build a board that supported a company that in a way was a contradiction to all modern art? Our first yeah. board was actually simply people who were interested yeah. in what we did, not particularly well connected. Friends and relatives. Yes. And like uh, <laughs> one person would introduce another and gradually, I don't even really know exactly how, all yeah. these more important people, we would go and talk to somebody at Sun Life and, uh, even, and they would give us money and maybe suggest somebody to be on the board. Uh, we would go, same thing with the banks. And these, yeah. these corporations do have uh, a sort of a mandate to have people on, on boards. So it wasn't that difficult, you know, actually. Uh, Robert, it's, it's, it's the same as talking about the company itself. On one hand, it, it, it takes on a life of its own. It starts growing, it starts rolling, and you're left <gasps> running to keep after it. Uh, certain types of board members would bring in other people, would bring in other people. Uh, it grew at the same rate as the company, just like our administration has grown with the company. But I would say the other thing, though, for young people, young performers, actors, producers who are trying to put something together. I think it's absolutely vital that people realize that people aren't afraid to ask. They're not afraid to ask for help. They're not afraid to ask people to join a board. They're not afraid to ask famous performers to come and perform with them. Robert, I didn't know you. I only knew you by your reputation. I ended up having to phone you out of the blue and say, hi, my name is Marshall and call the call. And <laughs> it was the same thing with all of the actors that were put together for the productions that we did together. It's the same thing for the first time we picked up the phone and thought we're going to phone some of the dancers at the National Ballet and ask if they'll come and work with us because we simply didn't have enough freelance dancers. It seemed outrageous at the time. It's the same thing with board members. We were told at one point that we should get in touch with Blue Mapel. Bless her heart. Blue Mapel. I mean, that was like saying get in touch with God. It was ridiculous. How do you even find her? Mm -hmm. But we did get in touch with Blue Mapel. And she did say she'd be willing to come and see a show. And then she did know some of the people who were on the board. Soon, Bluma's on our board. Soon, Bluma's phoning the Prime Minister's office for us when we're going on tour. It, it's, she was unbelievable, not to mention the enormous checks she wrote for us and everything else, and dragging all sorts of other important so people. I, I bring it up because you have been such a success, but a number of theatre companies have had terrible time because they've had the wrong board. Mm. Oh yes, that is true. You know what true. I mean? And yes, so somehow um, you seem to have managed this. You, you, of course you attract people because of what you're doing, but you've also avoided the bad board problems yes, that Yes, uh, we've only have. just become aware of that sort of thing. We interview all of our board members and uh, do make sure that they really are people that love art and uh, that they understand what we're about. We really have to understand what we're about. We're very, very hands-on with our board. We're never, there's always one of us at every board meeting, at every executive board meeting. Right. We are never out of the picture and I think that's vital. I think also, as Jeanette said, knowing it's not just a question of filling a board up, it's a question of filling up a board with people who you know are on side. That means there's a whole process of meeting with them, talking with them, making certain they understand what you're about, what you're working toward, and if they don't like it, to go away because we don't want people who are coming on simply because they're putting in their time doing some... Have you ever asked a board member that maybe this isn't the right thing for you? We've told people who have said they wanted to be on our board that we think that they were mistaken and no hard feelings, but it's not a fit. We've See, that's the, okay, so that's a wisdom that we ne need to know about yeah. because uh, I don't know if that's courage or wisdom on your part or courage or conviction, but to be able to say no. It's no, we have it's seen the bad, yeah, we've seen yeah. the bad boards and what happens when yeah. suddenly somebody tries to take over, usually in a rather commercial way, an artistic company just doesn't work and yeah. uh, 
uh, we have been very careful. Preservation, as you said. We have to look at the bottom line, but we can't have a board member thinking that that is the most important thing. Uh, it, they, they have to understand what they're there what we're trying to achieve and that they're there to help us try to achieve that. And we have a wonderful board uh, that and does so much for us. And I think also it's the chair of the board, which I think is the most important person. And Bluma was our chair. She brought on the chair that we have now, who if we, we have broken all board rules. We've had the same chair for about 12 years now and we're not letting her go anywhere. Oh no, she's anywhere. wonderful. She's this is someone who she's absolutely adores the art, adores us, adores all the Very intelligent person. Protective, yes, intelligent. And, uh, and she's intimidating. I mean, she's one of, the most, one of the most powerful women in business in North America. She's been named as that. When Alberta sits down, she lays down the law and she runs the meetings with an iron fist and we feel like we're being protected. She's the whole Italian. Time. She understands the yeah. what arts mean and yeah. the importance of the arts. You know, there have been times that people have questioned our imagery because we tend to go with very sensual and sometimes very sexually driven imagery. We've moved away from from the what people expect to see in Baroque imagery. We've had a great deal of, of nudity, a great deal of uh, trying to help people focus on the person rather than the extraneous details. I would, re I would rephrase that and I would say a lot of our preconceptions about, about the Baroque are very aesthetic and very dry because we see them on the chapel ceilings, we yes. see them on the paintings. And what you've actually done is put breath, uh, breath and blood and bone back into what seemed a very dry and artificial yes, so style. What is it really all about? Can we get past the wigs and the costumes and, and remind people of what it is, what it is about? It but is about the body, yes? Oh, absolutely. It's about the body and it's about the body and it's about huge overriding emotions. We've had board members who have been very, very concerned saying, I can't sell this image or we can't put our logo on this image. We have a big fight ahead of us. What are we going to do? And Alberta is the person who steps in and says, this is not a discussion for us. This is not a board issue. This is an artistic decision. It's our job to support this image because that image is part of the production. There should be no discussion. So this is an excellent point for the next question. We live in a very commercialized culture. It's as if we've been imagined by the commercialization of things. How do you maintain this course, which as you said, you're an artistic company. How do you maintain that when the the atmosphere around us in Toronto and Canada and North America is more deeply and deeply a commercial imagination. If anything, I would say we actually take some of that commercialism and we use it because I think the commercialization at times can be something that can be interesting, we can learn from it and we can use it. You mean marketing? And I'm, I'm talking about marketing. Maybe okay. you're talking about something broader, you're talking about something. What's on stage is what I was talking uh -huh. about. But no, no, talk about marketing because... Well, I, mean, we, I, I think that because selling things is so vital, some of the most brilliant, creative minds in the industry are out there helping people sell things. Some of the most artistic minds are out there helping people sell perfume, handbags, clothes. It was going to uh, Dolce and Gabbana, who I, I, are stupendous, stupendous advertisers. They, who was the, the perfume uh, manufacturer I was talking about oh, earlier? Jean-Paul Gaultier. Yes, that's right. I mean, these are people who understand what it is to sell luxury items to people and convince them that they want it, they need it, they want to experience it. Because what you're selling in terms of your performance is in fact a luxury item? It is a luxury item, right. absolutely. I think it's, uh, it's a luxury to be able to go to the theater and say, make me feel something. It's a luxury to be able to put out $100, $120, $150 for a ticket. Although we have always insisted on keeping it affordable as well. We have yes. tickets for always affordable tickets as well. Because that's what I want to do. I want to make sure that every student yes, exactly. get, goes and sees that aesthetic, yeah. that sumptuousness, that color, yeah. that music, that form. We have two wonderful student prices yeah. always. Uh, in fact, it's we also, important. and we won't on the most prosaic level, we won't even have an audience if we don't do that in the future. It's, we need to expose young people to this aesthetic if we want them to develop the taste and the interest to want to either pursue it themselves or to attend or even just have their lives touched by it. In fact, 
I think we're one of the only companies, at least companies of our size that you would find in the country, where both our making of an opera program, which is a day-long program where young people come in and work with the entire creative team and meet artists. That entire program is offered for free for uh, schools that are bused in from and all they over And then the see the production as well. And then they come to dress rehearsal for free. Now, those tickets are underwritten by one of our sponsors.